Today, I had so much fun chatting with my friend, Kasindi Chow. Kasindi is a highly respected matchmaker, dating coach, and author with a passion for helping individuals find meaningful and lasting love. She is so kind and genuine and has the greatest sense of humor. Kasindi is a true ally and coach for her clients looking for love. We talk matchmaking, online dating, and about her book that is filled with the rich world of Chinese wisdom she draws on to help her clients transform their love lives and meet their soulmate. There was also a little bit of matchmaking on the spot. So I had a lot of laughs and I always learn with Cindy and I hope you enjoy as well. Welcome to Let's Talk Love, the podcast that brings you real talk, fresh ideas and expert insights every week. Our guests are the most trusted voices in love and relationships, and they're here for you with tools, information, and friendly advice to help you expand the ways you love, relate, and communicate. We tackle the big questions, not shying away from the complex, the messy, the awkward, and the joyful parts of relationships. I'm your host, Robin Ducharme. Now, let's talk love. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Let's Talk Love. Today, I'm just so excited to be spending this time with my friend, Kasindi Chow. Welcome to the show, Kasindi. Well, thank you, Robin. I'm so excited to spend time with you. I was like so excited. I'm like, I have all these ideas, and I can't wait to chat with you some more and catch up. Well, I'm I'm so excited. So you and I met, I guess it was last, was it last month or the month before? We were in California together at Rachel Greenwald's Love MBA. And she curated a group of just such amazing people, you among them. And we were all there to talk about matchmaking and how, and dating coaching. And I'm just, I was, I was there as a learner, a listener. Um, Obviously we're in the love business together, but I'm no longer working as a matchmaker and dating coach. But I think Today, what I really wanted to um, talk about, obviously, is this business of matchmaking and dating coaching and how this really works. Because I think a lot of people don't understand how matchmaking works and what you're doing day to day with people to help them find love. But before we do that, I know we had started our call and you had asked me, well, okay, Robin, are you married? Are you separated? What's going on? I said, well, I'm going through a divorce. And you had talked about how you had a few matches you were thinking of for me. So I just thought we would go through that just for fun. <laughs> sure, of course. Of course. I well, love this stuff. I really do. Well, first of all, uh, I love meeting you at Rachel's Love MBA. And what's always really been special about Rachel's group is that she curates a really special small group of really like-minded people who really yeah. care about what they do and are very intentional. And what I love is also that we all do a lot of self-work as well. And I love your own evolution and your own journey. I just think it's really, it just makes me just want to get to know you even more. Like I've been reading your stuff. Oh, I, I just really love what you do. Um, oh, I think so. and, and I think it's a, it's a, like, I, I think I had said at the, at the Love MBA is that People who go into love or matchmaking, we are adventurers. We are coming out of the box. We are evolving. And I think it's a really special group of people because as matchmakers or people in the profession, we also take a lot of headspace, right? Our headspace goes into caring about our clients, just like you care about your audience, what they're getting and learning from them. And it's very intentional. And I think it's um, it's really special because I think it's a sign of a giving person. You know, I think you're a very giving person. I mean, you've put together these amazing conferences that I want to go to because there's so much to learn, right? And it's not yep. just to date, but also to grow as a person because I feel like what you put out there influences what you get back. Even if it's not just for dating, it's also just for meeting people and and improving your life and making it more colorful. Sorry, I, I, I'm talking too much, but that's kind of no. I you're not. I love it. There. I love it. It's all. It's all about. It's all about connection, right? Yes. And and the other thought I was just thinking of is, um, you know, you are helping. You're introducing people for the intention of them having, you know, a loving partnership. And also, it's like 
you can, you can make the introduction, but then it's like, how do you sustain that relationship? So, you know, I think there's two, there's, there's these two sides to it, right? You can introduce yeah. the best people, but it's like, how do you actually make that relationship strong and healthy? And, and you're guiding people on, on how do they make the right choice on their partner too. It's not just this big list they, they, they come, you're, you're guiding people to look at what's most important. 100%. It's all about, it's kind of, you know, I, I think what it is that we, we, so whether it's society or whether it's our own upbringing, we have lists, right? We, we, you know, we have ideas of what we want, right? This is what we want. We're going to go get it. But sometimes we don't necessarily think about what it is that we really need because we're in this kind of checkbox of achievement, and especially for people in the Asian diaspora. Like, you know, I'm Asian. You know, our parents have expectations, you know, before yes. with education, but also then with, 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 you know, relationships. And so we, we internalize these expectations, but not necessarily realizing what does it really mean for us, right? I think somebody had said, and, and a girlfriend of mine just wrote to me the other day, she said, she has a funny bumper sticker that says, I was a gifted and talented student. You know, you know my, my parents are proud that I was a gifted and talented student. And what I got out of it was a lifetime of anxiety right? So wow. yes, she got yep. what her parents wanted, but she didn't get what she wanted. And, you know, it's interesting, right? How so, we would need to think about that more. Yeah. And so you tell the story in your book. I loved your book, Cindy. Ah, uh, well, thank you for reading it. It's a little <laughs> Ancient <laughs> Wisdom, Modern Love, Chinese Wisdom for Dating Success. And I wanted to go through um, the tenets of what, what you wrote about the, the wisdom, the Chinese wisdom and how it relates to dating. Can you tell us about the, your evolution and how um, you, you've got such a fascinating background? I mean, t tell us about how you, you know, your career and how you changed your career path and be became a matchmaker and dating concierge. Like, how did this? And, I, and then I also want to talk about how what we just what we just what we just talked about sure. was how you okay. when you were dating, you did have this idea of what you thought you wanted in a man and a partner. And you oh. turned out to be meeting, you know, your, your husband, who you're so happy with, but he wasn't what you thought in the beginning you needed. Not at all. <laughs> or wanted. So yeah. let's talk about your career path first, which I think is okay. fascinating. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Robin. Um, so it's a journey, right? It was a journey as being, yeah. in my case, Asian American or, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, Asian Canadians in your, in your uh, viewership, but it's a journey of what our parents expected and me kind of towing the line, but then realizing over time that it just wasn't doing it for me and needing to, to find that path and to lean into honoring my own cultural heritage and, and reveling in it, in it, you know? So yeah, I started off, did all the right things, went to a great college, went to Wellesley college, which is where Hillary Clinton went, you know, did the whole right thing, went into banking because it was financially sound. And I worked at JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs and I met some great friends there, but I hated it. The hours were terrible. And honestly, I am terrible at finance. And I tell people you should never hire me to do finance because my number <laughs> skills are terrible. Yeah. I, and, and my husband laughs because he should never touch numbers. But people believe that because they saw me as an Asian American number cruncher, hard worker. But I was the laziest person at that. And I almost flunked out of college because I was goofing off and my goofing off was the Asian Association blind date semi-formal. And I had yes. so much fun matching over a hundred, you know, for this great party. It was our biggest fundraiser. I remember loving it, but never thinking this could be a career, right? So I went into banking, did the whole thing, but years always thought about, could I do this? And that's kind of how it led to uh, Rachel, Rachel's, love MBA and then kind of still kind of very being very diffident about this. Can I really make this into a career? But just realizing over time, this is what I really love doing. Yeah, it just, it fascinates me. I, I, I love bringing people together and also was reflected also in my own journey of being kind of high achiever, making buckets of money, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, until boom, a few things happened. One, my mother got cancer and it was ovarian cancer. It's a pretty serious, I left Goldman. I came back home to take care of her because we were worried. We didn't think, you know, we just didn't know. She did yeah. stay on for 10 years, which is amazing. But it also made me really kind of do reflection about what really matters in life. 
right? Mm -hmm. You know, the Harvard, the, you know, the MBA, all these fancy, fancy check marks of people you want to date, are they really going to be there for you? Right. And so right. that's kind of how I found my love. <laughs> I had been dating and some of the dating wasn't that, you know, it was more like I had to support them too. But I met Fred and I was at a party in Hong Kong. And I'm thinking this guy, no, I, you know, he's not sophisticated. He showed up in sandals and a big Jackie Chan t-shirt. Like, <laughs> no. Instead, I was flirting with this wonderful Australian Asian gentleman with a sexy accent. I was like, wow, I want to date him. So I completely ignored Fred. But then over time, we became friends. And I realized this guy is really nice. And he really makes me feel great and safe. And yeah. It's yes. kind of how it started. So, you know, yes. and he's been, th we've been through thick and thin. You know, we have three children. My oldest is special needs and Fred's been a gem. You know, he, he's been through everything and he makes me laugh. I think, I think that's just beautiful. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And it's about how he makes, he makes you feel right. Yes. It, yes. So, so tell me how does matchmaking work when you're, Tell, tell us about the process that's involved. Like somebody, if, 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 a, if somebody finds you, however, probably a lot of word of mouth, right? Because Cindy, because you're, yeah. you and your team are very successful at what you're doing. So I'm sure there's a lot of referrals going on there. Um, and how does it work? Like how do you determine, okay, I'm going to take this client on or, and the dating coaching, how does that, both, Got both it. those elements work? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, my, my general niche tends to be, you know, yeah, I just call it agents and those who love them. But although over half my database <laughs> is, is not as is, is non Asians, and it's very intentional and very cerebral because I feel that the smartest people in the world have the biggest blind spots. So that's my goal is to really kind of help work through the blind spots. So depending upon the client and everybody has their own needs, sometimes I would try to talk to some of their friends and family and I'll do interviews because. We all have a girlfriend or a friend that we know that's single, but we can't really tell them why they're single because it would hurt our friendship. That's where a matchmaker can really come in. You can kind of do very intentionally understand what are the blockers. And also because we're trained, we can also provide the feedback to help our clients date so much better, right? So I, I do that conversation. I also sometimes would do a mock date so that way they can get some feedback. Um, and then I put together a plan. And the plan will be, you know, for example, maybe a client, um, you know, her picker's broken. She keeps on picking the wrong type and she keeps on thinking mm -hmm. that's the attractive one or, you know, they want the shiny, shiny person. And so I'll kind of, you know, do a test. Like, look, this is, you know, you said you wanted to feel good. You said you wanted this, you know, and I've given you some, some sample dates. How does this person make you feel? You know, and we just kind of map things out, you know, or I have a current client right now who gets very nervous. And she will automatically say, oh, well, this person doesn't like me because of this. Or, and she finds all these reasons to say no. And I try to calm that person down and just go, look, let's just try. So I'm basically like the ally, right? So matchmaking is allyship, right? Allyship to help our clients yes. stay confidently and help them feel safe because they're going out there on a limb based upon your nudging. And so that's why it's very intentional. And I want my clients to feel safe because when they feel safe, they just date so much more positively, right? And, it, yes. and, and the dating market is difficult. I mean, there's a lot of ghosting and gas, or just like gaslighting, all sorts of issues that, you know, I, so I'm very cognizant of my client's mental protection because I don't want it to be hurt because otherwise they won't date well. Right. So I love that you're doing interviews with the, your clients, friends, and family. Like that is so smart. So what, like, for example, like I'm just thinking about myself. Okay. This is, I'm going through my second divorce and I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm beyond the shame phase because I was, you know, there's a lot of, there is, there is shame involved with that. I, you know, I thought the first time around was going to be forever and that didn't turn out. And the second time was way, way shorter. And I realized it's just like, this is, I can't, I'm not happy. And I, and I, I try, 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 and it didn't work. Right. Um, and we're going to go our separate ways, but still raise our son. And that's the way it's going to be. 
Um, but I'm like, what do I do next time? Right? I must have blind spots. So maybe, maybe not. I think so. So would you recommend that somebody like, would I make those phone calls and be like, just give it to me, right? Give it to me straight. I like, I want, I want, <laughs> you know, am I asking my family and friends to be like, what do you think are my blind spots? Would you recommend people do that? I actually would. Uh, but I think you also have to be prepared to hear it too. Um, so I guess, so first of all, I want to say it's, you're owning your own vulnerability. So that's so wonderful that you're doing that because I think there's no shame at all in divorce. In fact, I think what's wonderful is that you drew the boundary to protect yourself. So I think you need to give yourself kind of a, a pat on the back, you know, oh, for doing that. You. Because I think Give myself often, some love, right? Exactly, Rather than giving exactly. myself shit. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 no. Please, you know, and, I, and that's the thing. I think sometimes we are so hard on ourselves and the key is yeah. don't because oh, <laughs> let it out because it's not helping you, right? And, and okay, so I digress. So on to um, advice. So I have a question to you is in your own heart of hearts, what do you, you probably know this in your heart too. What do you think your friends would say about your dating habits or your picker? I think in the case with my second marriage, um, I was ignoring red flags that I, I could clearly see in the beginning, you Got know? It. And then it just, it, it kind of was like this, snowball effect everything was happening and I was going along with it and you know I should have paid attention to those things that just weren't weren't aligned with me Understood. in the beginning so Understood. I could have I think that's what they would say because I was I was voicing it to my my loved ones going I'm concerned about this like what do you think and then I'm a, I'm a problem solver. I'm a communicator. So I would be sitting down and, you know, we're in therapy, like <laughs> before we got married. Right. So I'm, I want to work on this and make sure we can. Right. So it's not like I wasn't making the effort. Um, but that, that's what I would say. It's like being way more discerning and way more aligned with myself and being like, no, that's not OK. And that's not going to change. And, and understanding that I can't change somebody. Right. Of They're course. showing he's showing me who he is from the beginning. And I need to really um listen and watch and and take that seriously so that's that that is my path next is like when i'm looking for a partner um when i'm dating it's like you know if things are big big red flags it's like just like go the other direction do not pass yeah. go <laughs> do, do my, what do, yeah. you, do you think that's partially also your own like just wanting to make things work, like kind of thinking that you know because, yes. you know I, I heard that you said that you wanted to you know that you would therapy like it sounds like maybe the other person wasn't as committed to that from the get-go. And yeah. that's basically going to have a drag, right? You got one person just kind of like, it's like you're pulling dead weight, right? And then it makes you go higher and higher to get the tension of the dead weight. And it's t exhausting. You can't do that. Yeah. It's not sustainable. And it just makes you so my, yeah. yeah. So my therapist is like, okay, you know, there's codependency stuff going on here. I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to work on that because I don't want to be um, in a codependent relationship with my, my partner or any relationship, no. codependent in any relationship. So it is a learning and right. It's a lot of self-reflection so that I can make better choices in the future. Yeah. You know, do you ever feel, <laughs> no, but I, no, I think it's good. But do you ever feel that sometimes it's frustrating because I think that for a lot of us that are like, are working on our own awareness, we realize that we're imperfect. And so we're working on it. But then there's a group of people who clearly don't think that they need to work on it. And you're just like, oh, my gosh, but life would be so much better if you worked on it. But it's like that goes to my phrase is um, you're playing the flute for the cow. Right. Daniel, OK, okay so tell, yes, tell us about these. Ways. <laughs> I, I, I love this. So let's go through your book and ta let's talk about some of these ancient um, Chinese wisdom. Um, I love it. Well, so let's let's well, talk about that. <laughs> But basically what it means is that like, so I use these phrases all the time because these are phrases, these are Chinese phrases that my mom taught me as a kid, but yeah. I find them so effective whenever I talk about dating matchmaking. So in this case, it was, it's day nyo tan xing, which means you're playing the flute for the cow. And in one context, it could be like, oh, you play, you know, you're talking about something, but the person just doesn't get the language. So in this case, you're you're so self-aware, you're working in yourself, you're thinking about what you can do better, how you can be more present. Meanwhile, the other person is like, 
you know, that's the cow, right? And so you're playing this beautiful music and the cow just doesn't get it. So basically just <laughs> <laughs> moo. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but in the book, yes, I, I, these are phrases that are more memorable, right? And that's just, that's the whole point. And there's playing the flute for the cow. There's also, um, the frog in the uh, well. I like this oh, the, one, Cassandra. Yeah. Oh, Jing Ji Zhuwa, yes, which is the frog in the well about how people can be so blind, right? You're just looking up and that's the sky and that's all you see. And that that's what you think. I've got to date all these check marks or check boxes. And it's very limiting. Yes. And so how are you like, let's give, let's, let's talk about the examples that you put in the book. And I know this is what you're seeing in your practice is people coming in. And this is when I was matchmaking the same thing. It's just, you know, people coming into your office and they're like, okay, he has to be this tall, make this <laughs> amount of money educated. He like, tell us about the list that you're, that you're seeing oh. and hearing and how you're helping people like shift away from that, like out of the frog in the well. Yeah. Um, into a bigger it, perspective. It absolutely, what you saw and what I see is so much, is so similar. And I think it's very societal um, about, mm -hmm. you know, they, I want somebody who's tall. I want somebody who's smart because I want to learn from them. I want somebody who's, who's financially, you know, wealthy, you know, that can take care of me. I mean, all these things that people want, it's universal. It's almost like it's off of a check checklist. It's off of a ex socially accepted checklist. But there's nothing in there about, oh my gosh, this guy makes me laugh. This guy makes me feel safe. This this gentleman, you know, you know, or this partner, uh, you know, is there for my family. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the really important things get forgotten, and it's fascinating how, you know, we are all kind of programmed into this box not realizing what's important. And it happens on the other side too. I got my, my male clients are like, oh, it's gotta be hot. You know, oh, be, yeah. oh yeah, 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 yeah. And and but meanwhile it's kind of funny. So in one client I, I did get them hot. And he said he was so bored. He said he didn't know what to say. He was stunned. <laughs> you know, I'm like, well how did that make you feel? Does this person is this is this really making you happy? You know, do you feel safe yourself? No. Basically it was right. very it felt very transactional. Right. Right. So. There's so much coaching that goes in um, that that goes into the business that you're in. I just I, I think it's just so awesome because you're helping people to open up their perspectives and look for exactly what's most important in a relationship. Right. Exactly. So it what what's so this? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. no go on. So you've got your um, the next saying is drawing a pancake to satisfy a hunger. Tell us about <laughs> that one. Uh, don't, don't be. So basically, yeah. So basically, we will, we 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 think this is what we want, right? That that unicorn of a man or the hottie of a woman, and it's we're drawing this giant pancake, and you're thinking, oh, if I have this, I'm gonna satisfy my hunger, and it's not. It's it's basically it's it's a full it's fool's gold, right? It's it's a dream, but it's really not gonna, you know, it, all it is is maybe checks a box for your ego but doesn't really feed your soul. And I think that's something we often forget about is that we all have a soul and we have to nurture that, uh, you know, that you can't just have, let's just say, let's just say you have the most beautiful lady sitting there and it's not going to make you happy because over time it just, you're just going to stare at a person all day long, not somebody, not have the conversation or the laughter, raising a family. All that is messy. Life is messy. Life is not a TV show. And you want right. to have the best ally through thick and thin. And that yeah. ally doesn't necessarily come in the shape of, of, of a unicorn. That ally might come in the shape of, you know, I don't know, a bear <laughs> or a turtle, but somebody who's really, who, who makes you happy. Exactly. I remember when I was um, on, in the first course I took with Rachel in Denver, and she said something that stuck with me forever. And it was like that your, your partner is going to show up in a completely different package than you expect. So don't even try to imagine what they're going to look like, right? Because there's just endless possibilities and humans, we, we all look different, right? So they're putting, putting limitations on what this, what you're thinking you need in, in a physical form in your partner um, is, is, is a fruitless activity. Just, just be open, right? Absolutely. I 100% agree with you. 
on that. That that's it, it, because it's it's really what matters, you know. And I think you yeah. hit the hit the nail on the head about what what matters is really important is really the heart and the spirit and the person inside versus just a physical package. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about online dating. And I've I've written a quote out um, here about online dating because you say, and this this has to do with the um, this this lesson, this ancient wisdom around drawing a pancake to satisfy hunger. You say <laughs> online dating is a minefield of illusion from filtered pictures and curated profiles to sometimes outright dishonesty, getting to know each other without meeting in person leaves a lot of opportunity for filling in the blanks with your imagination. And I think, I think there's a, there, there is this going on a lot, right? Cause I'm, I mean, I've been online dating in so long and I only did it very, very, a very short period of time years ago to meet my, my second husband. Um, but there is a lot, you, you have to be careful, right? You, and it's like the point of doing online dating is to get in person, get, get in, um, in real life and meet people in, in person, right? If Absolutely. you're spending all this time communicating all over the apps, you're not like, you're going to be creating this illusion of this person that you actually haven't met in person yet. 100% agree. Online dating is such a minefield and it's getting worse because of all the you know, AI and there's there's a lot of fraudsters on there. I have some of my clients come to me with all sorts of stories of being tricked and, you know, you know um, and I think what's hard is it's a game, right? The online apps, the way that their business model is to, is to keep people on it, right? They don't want you to find somebody, fall in love and be off of it. They want to get that monthly income off of everybody. And they have all these games like, oh, incognito mode, or, you know, you could send them a gift, you know, you know the league, and they all have, they all have their little gimmicks and tricks. Um, and it is very illusional because, you know, it gets you in almost into like a, like a, like a video game world. You're like, oh, wow, I can keep on playing. I can keep on seeing who's behind door number 75. Right. And so then you almost lose track of what you're there for in the first place is really to have to meet your partner. You're not in it just to play the dating game, but people think right. that it's and it's very attractive. It is a video. Actually, you know, it is like a video game. <laughs> you know, mm. it's, like a video, it's like the dating video game. But I think we have to always kind of remind ourselves to get out of that prism because our eyes are so focused on it and back off and go, wait, I just want to meet the person in person. They go, yeah, I, I need to see living and breathing. And I think we often forget that. And it may not be as exciting or as glitzy as what's, you know, all these pictures floating, but this is real life. You know, you want to have that partner by your side, not on a screen. Right. So Cassidy, you are helping people with online dating, right? I mean, you, you would recommend, like, I know you're doing matchmaking, but you're also recommending that people online date, right? Because you want to try so many different avenues as, as you can um, to meet your, per your partner. So you you don't you also don't want to be stuck on how you meet them. It's like your goal is to meet them. So the how is not that important, but you want to do many different things in order to increase your your chances, right? Oh, absolutely, a hundred percent. You know, unless online dating is ruining your 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 happiness and your ability to be open, so you to be yes. careful about that. But I yes. do. But I one hundred percent agree that you know when you're out dating you want to have all your avenues open, whether it's being friends and family recommending, you know, whether it be uh, uh, online dating, whether it be matchmaking, there's so many different ways to meet people that you really want to have them all working at the same time. Because if you're dating, you're having fun, you know, and you're meeting people and learning from them, you're, you kind of have a very positive vibe. And that's really important because, you know, you're going to find the person, everybody I know who is deliberate about finding a match will find somebody. Yes. It's you're putting your focus, you're putting your priorities um, in that direction and it will happen. It's just a matter of time. It might exactly. be a long road or it might be short, but you're, you're going to get there. Exactly. I love that. And if you, and if you, and if people say that there's not going to happen, it won't happen. Like, Oh, there's no good men out there. Well, that's baloney. In fact, I just talked to a friend from Vancouver who told me specifically that his guy friends say there's no good woman out there. I'm like, Oh my gosh, why is everybody not meeting? And I asked him because he's a product manager, smart guy, you know, plays on a, on a, on like a hockey league and he's a, he's a cutie. I'm like, really? I didn't believe it. He goes, yeah. And I go, why aren't you guys going out? He's like, well, 
we've just given up. We just hang out. Guys and guys hang out in our homes. I'm like, well, yeah, we got to find and a way that's to get not going to work. Out. Exactly. Exactly. If you're hanging around all your guy friends and you're expecting to meet women, like it just doesn't, it doesn't add up, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't take rocket science. No, yeah. exactly. So tell me, so tell me, how are you setting your clients up to be successful with online dating? Like we, we know you need professional, or like really good pictures, right? Can we talk about that? Cause Cindy, and then also sure. how, like, what do you recommend that people put in their profiles to differentiate themselves from other people? Because it's millions of people that are online, right? So you you do have to be unique. For sure. Would you say? It, unique is very important because it's very visual, right? It's it's all very, it's a visual medium at the end of the day. Um, so for for women and for men, sometimes I, this is what I, I tell people to do. Put a picture of you with food. Let's just say you're at a bakery or you're, there's some pies or let's just say you're a baker, whatever it is, because I think people's, are you know we, we 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 relax when we see yummy stuff right like oh that looks really <laughs> yummy that looks really cool you know well no but they so the next time i'm in a bakery i'm gonna get somebody to take a picture of me yes 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 uh, yes no I, I i i've i've done it with cheddar scallion scones i remember one of my first matches and they're married now with yeah i i yeah i experience yeah i love baking cheddar scallion scones um or biscuits biscuits you know would you like to try some or something like that so dumb it's so, so corny but it works and she's and she's married she was one of, one of my pandemic weddings right okay another yes. woman i had her stand right behind a bakery she doesn't bake but there's all these tarts and pies behind her right and then i had a guy you know stand next to a barbecue grill right and it works yeah. just like on the opposite side for example, men, as you know, don't, you know, they, they, if, if a woman has pictures of her with her cats, the guys are two times as likely not to swipe on her, which They're is like, silly. No, don't put you and your cats on, but I know, but it is like this thing. Yeah. yeah it's awesome. <laughs> that people, and, it's psychological. Yes, She's a cat the, lady. It's like, well, what the, the heck? <laughs> and, the reason, and the reason why I know food, which is a really sad story, is that my dad got scammed by these Chinese scammers, you know. And the way they scammed him, my dad's 89, was they sent pictures of themselves, not even them, fake pictures of a lady with a bunch of food. Oh, my darling, I'm having breakfast. Oh, my darling, I'm having dip. And, you know, it clearly got his own defenses down, which is terrible to take a tip from scamming, but might as well learn from everything. And so food is really useful to get people to kind of bring down their defenses. Yeah. Okay. So a picture with food. What, um, yep. and then what about, um, other pictures you recommend? And also what do you recommend that people put in their profiles? Like, ah, okay. So I think for profile pictures, definitely something that shows your, your face and your eyes, because again, this is a proxy for who you are. So sometimes I'll tell my clients, well, here's a trick, you know, when you are talking, you know, and it's a little hard on the screen here, but you really want to look in the screen in the eye. So you want to look at the, at the camera and just show them your soul in a speak. So that's mm. really important. And also obviously your physique, because if you don't, people are just going to imagine what they can't see. So be open about it. I think people will say, Oh, I can't go dating until I lose 10 pounds. Baloney. Baloney. Right. We're, you know, in fact, I think a few more pounds makes us more huggable, more lovable, right? We're, we're all different sizes. And I think exactly. that's the other lesson around this is like, not every uh, man or woman is attracted to a thin physique, right? Yeah, it's like, exactly. I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not looking for like a super rock hard body guy. Like I just want to be attracted to him. And that could be, I'm, I'm attracted to many, many different types of men. So there you go. Yeah. yeah right. Exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> A hundred percent because, you know, life is a big buffet, <laughs> it's a big opportunity. And, yeah. you know, anyways, yeah, for sure. Okay. And then what about the written profile? Ah, the written so part. So the written profile, I always say, you know, don't lead with career because career is so, is so dry. Right. And it's really an opportunity to, to beg a question. Right. And so, you know, what you're really doing on your online profile is really to get the person on the other side, the viewer, to ask a question. You know, whether it's like, oh my gosh, this amazing trip I went on or this special dish I've been making, what do you think? You know, things like that, anything that begs a question and avoid the avoid the trite. Right? Everybody does like, oh, 
you know, I enjoy fine wine and travel. Everybody says something very generic. And so I think specifics really make a difference. And, and I always encourage my clients to be as specific as you can. Um, and be and and add a little humor. Humor is quite sexy. Yes. So, because Cindy, I've been starting to write a few things Aha. for my online profile when I am ready to do this. Oh, let me help you. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, oh, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. good. This is good because I I do want to be. Um, yeah, I want to show like little, little things. Okay, and that you can you. I would love your critique on this. Sure. So, okay. I make my bed every morning. <laughs> I love, okay, and, and this might be really boring, but I love I spending every my- morning af, after blank, blank, blank. Hmm? After what? After waking up? <laughs> well, I don't know. We, you know, a little frisky here, right? Sorry. <laughs> um, I, Maui and Vernon are two of my happy places. Oh. I'm a fraternal twin. Ooh, I'm a like cowgirl at heart. I like the cowgirl at heart. That one's really good. Cause it's, it, cause I think, I think these things are like showing, okay, she likes country music. Um, I, I love spin on my Peloton, boot camp workouts, hikes and walks in our gorgeous city and parks with my dog. Oh my Is God. that boring so, or what? That might be no, boring. It's, it's, that's, no, it's that's not, really it's, boring. It's not boring at all because, okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm going to cut into your podcast because the guy that I was singing for you, you know, his phrases, I'm just as comfortable comfortable at the Yale Club in New York as I am in my cowboy boots on my ranch. <gasps> He's got a ranch? This might work, well, Cindy. <laughs> no, okay. Okay. It's not, you know what's it, funny? It's, I, I told my daughters, I was like, my next partner is going to be a cowboy. I really want him to be a cowboy because I really am okay. from Calgary and like I'm a cowgirl. I really am. I love country okay. music and I'm like, okay. you know, down to earth, down to earth. Okay. You know. Well, I have to. I have to caveat. It's not really a ranch. It's it's like a it's, it's like a mini ranch, and his cattle is not a lot. It's it's a cow. It's one cow, and the reason why it's yeah. one cow is because I think his daughter, or his teenage daughter, what years ago wanted a cow, so he got her a cow. I mean, his kids are grown, you know, and so he still so has funny. the cow. So, so. <laughs> this is so funny. Okay, what else? <laughs> What else would you say about this guy? Like, I, I do okay, want to hear about Okay, him. okay, okay. So, I, I, so, you know, sometimes, like, with match, so sometimes, you know, we sit there as matchmakers, we say, we're, oh, we have a formula, we match, but sometimes it's baloney, okay? Because sometimes we just go out there, and this is yeah. out there. And so, what I thought was really cute was that you and him had the same name. His name's Robin. I know. <laughs> As if that's the reason for the match. Does he but spell like, it? Does he spell it? Does he spell it R O B I N? He does, but he doesn't use it anymore. Oh. He he doesn't use it. He 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 changed it. But I I so you know but again again this is like I pride myself on being really logical. But this is completely logical. Okay, somebody's matched because they have the same first name, but it was like, ooh, it's a sign. <laughs> yeah, you know. But he's he's a nice guy, uh, entrepreneurial, kind of a bit quirky. I say quirky, goofy, um, kind of sandy blonde hair, hazel eyes, um, you know, tall, you know, very goofy. Not, not, like I said, goofy, goofy sounds, he is goofy, quirky, fun. Yeah. Um, uh, talkative. Uh, is he super advanced. confident? Kind of. Yeah. He, 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 he sits yeah. comfortably in his skin. That's for sure. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. You know, but he also, he's very, very smart, but he also just kind of does it. He, he lives life the way he wants to live it. And that's yeah. that, you know, and he's very talented. I mean, he's, he was on the cover of a magazine for one of his businesses, um, but he's definitely quirky in the sense that because he's so intelligent. Um, and again, that's be careful. Don't put people intelligent men on pedestals because he could also be a jerk theoretically no but because he's so intelligent and very thoughtful you know it's hard to find people that are necessarily great matches because of that yeah what else i what, what really for me what really is the most important is obvious like my it's like the values and my very top value is my relationships with my children my family, I have a very close family, and my friends. I have a lot of dear, dear friends. 
And I want that in a partner. I want a partner that actually like wants to, he's focused on being a really good person with a beautiful heart and his relationships are, you know, the most important thing to him. I really feel that way. That's that that has to be aligned. Yeah. Your, your focus is a hundred percent correct. I do. I do know that he prides himself on being a really good father to his kids and they're really close. And I think just case in point, the guy's got a cow in his yard. (laughs) (laughs) Weird. (laughs) I'm open. I'm open. Anyways, we can talk (laughs) offline about this more because Cindy, we'll keep you posted and everybody and see if I actually do meet this guy later. But I have to go. I I have to finish my divorce first before I even look for another partner. Okay. Okay. First things first. But we can still have a have a have a call. (laughs) Well, you never know. I well, know, exactly. Indy, yeah, I just, um, I, I really do love you and I cherish our friendship and I, I, I just too. so enjoy spending time together and, and talking about love and the love business and online dating, matchmaking, all of that. It fuels me. So thank you for being with us today. And wow. um, I hope everybody picks up your book because I really did. I, like I laughed and I, I learned a lot and it, it was great. It's a great little read. So. Oh, well, thank you, Robin. It, it meant a lot to me to write that because of my own Asian heritage and how I really wanted to honor that and also help a lot of, you know, my, my brothers and sisters, so to speak, date well, you know, and date better because I think we all deserve a great love. Yeah. Well, I'm going to close with um, a blessing for, for us and for our listeners. May we keep our hearts and minds open when dating and looking to create meaningful relationships. And may we align our actions with our desires to find beautiful partnerships and create loving relationships. So thank you, Cassindi. No, thank you, Robin. You're the best. (laughs) Please visit realloveready.com to become a member of our community. Submit your relationship questions for our podcast experts at reallovereadypodcast at gmail.com. We read everything you send. Be sure to rate and review this podcast. Your feedback helps us get you the relationship advice and guidance you need. The Real Love Ready podcast is recorded and edited by Maya Anstey. Transcriptions by otter.ai and edited by Maya Anstey. We at Real Love Ready acknowledge and express gratitude for the Coast Salish people, the stewards of the land on which we work and play, and encourage everyone listening to take a moment to acknowledge and express gratitude for those that have stewarded and continue to steward the land that you live on as well.